not your average tabletop. Woohoo! Welcome back to Not Your Average Tabletop. I'm Zach. And I'm Pepper. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the Board Game Geek ranking rating system uh, and kind of our thoughts on some of that. And this is mostly brought up due to uh, recently the change in the number one game of all time on Board Game Geek from uh, Gloomhaven, who was kind of king for several years. So it had, had no competition for a while and Brass finally overtook it. And it was a very slow burn to get up there for Brass. It was. It had been climbing for so long. I, I never thought that would happen, but no, I I didn't think Here we really are. Brass. Brass Brass is a game that I wouldn't think it's kind of surprising that it'd be number one to me. A little surprising. Yeah. It's a good good game, obviously. You see, I rated it. A nine point five. I think it was. Oh. I had it at a nine. I moved it to a nine point five. Looks like I just changed it in February, um, which I did. But I think kind of this recent change here made me go back and reevaluate kind of where I'd rake some of my games, and I well, sort of everyone's going to get to see your ratings. I know. Get some hate for that Ark Nova. I'm going to get a lot of hate for that one. And that one did not update, and that's probably because I haven't played it since this play. So uh, that one stayed at a seven point five, but. Uh, yeah, let's get into talking a little bit about uh, the rating system. And I don't know if there's an exact science to it. I was kind of trying to look into how this geek rating was determined. And the, the closest thing I could find was, um, I think, Shelf Side on YouTube um, had said that there's like fake dummy votes that each game gets uh, about 14 or 1,400 to 1,500 fake votes of a 5.5 so that, like, new games can't just go straight up to, you know, be the best games, you know, if they're all ranking at a bunch of 10s or something as kind of a a joke or something, trying to push something up to the top. So that kind of stops that from happening a little bit, and I think they're required to have so many votes anyway to get a geek rating versus an average rating, because obviously if you're looking at average rating, that kind of changes kind of where things line up but it's kind of a huge formula and i don't know that there's an exact science to it only the gurus at board game geek know exactly what causes these things um but it's kind of an interesting thing i don't know that there's really a perfect way to ever rank things and not have people mess with it yeah yeah that's true i mean there's to really rank things just based on opinions, it's never really going to be perfect. No one's, right. you're not ever going to satisfy everybody. Right. Uh, but overall, like, just overall, I think these are games that do pretty well represent um, the games that I hear everyone talk about. So mm-hmm. I think they must have a decent system, however it may work, um, even if it does need a little tweak or maybe there's little issues we can find with it. I think it does do a pretty good job. I, I would agree. And um, yeah, so that um, also this recent change, it made me kind of wonder what games had been number one, uh, because I think ever since we got into board gaming, Gloomhaven has always been number one. I can't remember. Yeah. Maybe at the very beginning it, it wasn't, but it uh, might have been a pandemic for a little bit. Legacy. Right. So that's all pretty much all we've ever seen is Gloomhaven. Um, so I was kind of interested to see kind of how much that had changed. And um, based on uh, this here, there have not been that many top games of all time. And a couple of them were more jokes than anything. Yeah, <laughs> they weren't they were really <laughs> necessarily official number. I mean, they're official, officially yeah. number one games, but um, not quite earning it necessarily. Yeah, there have been 11, I think, and three of them have been not so official. More jokey type things. Um, Because, yeah, it looks like Monkey Auto Races uh, had a reign from April 1st, 2007 to April 2nd, 2007. So a bit of an April Fool's joke, I think. Um, I believe that's happening on the backside of Board Game Geek, probably doing that, Um, I would think. I guess I'm not sure why specifically this game but um it's interesting nonetheless then we also had the game of life 
uh, which <laughs> reached number one, which I think a lot of people would disagree with. Um, but there was a bug in the rating system, apparently. And this Mark Magus rated the game 65,535 out of 10, <laughs> and it worked, which is just crazy to me. So I, I, would, I don't know if it just happened to be this game, but then I don't know why, you know, it seems like that could have caused a lot of issues because people get it. I mean, if he could, I'm assuming everyone could kind of go yeah. over the top, which would really mess up things. But maybe it was just their specific account was kind of buggy or something. So, mm, yeah, yeah, um, that's kind of yeah. funny. The game of life. <laughs> I re- I re- that's, that's my favorite thing that I learned in this. search. <laughs> this is a pretty good one. <laughs> Um, but then also D Mocker, uh, highest rank ever won in 2010. Aldi, um, who works at Board Game Geek or owns Board Game Geek, I'm not 100% sure, uh, had his own April Fools with uh, ratings. And then the ranking was ordered based on database number. And D Mocker was number one for one day. The highest D Mocker ever got on his own was number two. So, so still a good game, aside from that. Not really a, a total joke. Like life. It's, it's well, I suppose if they were all added at the same time, I'm trying to think. If it was the first game added, wouldn't it have officially been number one for at least however I, don't, I guess I don't know how they added them into the system yeah. if it was like a mass upload, I'm assuming. But if it was the first one added for just at least a fraction of a second, you'd think it would be counted as number one. Since it was only one. But I guess yeah. I don't know. Uh, then there was Paths of Glory, which I don't know much about. That had a reign from August 19th, 2001 to February 20th, 2002. So a few months. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, I don't even, I'm not sure if I've heard of that one even. Yeah, I, I had not heard of that one till now. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty early on in uh, mm-hmm. system. So I don't know if they early on reigns. Not that they don't matter, but I don't right. think they hold as much as later right. on yeah and then um tiger and euphrates which i have heard of i have not played had a reign of the 20th of february 2002 to sometime in 2002 or 2003 and then 2002 or 2003 is not ideal but i can't find the date it was dethroned um so yeah I, i've heard of this one and i think it's still a somewhat popular game or is this the one that uh, was replaced by Yellow and Yaxi or um, Yaxi yeah, or yeah. whatever, however you say it, Yaxi. I think so, um, but I think both of them are still pretty, pretty loved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then we've got Agricola here, which is one that I've played, and that had a reign from August 18, two thousand eight, to February twenty eighth, two thousand ten. So that was a bit of a long reign, and I think it's still pretty popular, still in the top hundred games. Um, yeah. I don't think either of these ones are. I don't remember no. if Tiger says. I don't um, think so. Yeah, it's interesting that Agricola is, as you can see, and we'll see coming up, preceded by and succeeded by Puerto Rico. Um, oh, yep. So that was <laughs> it's interesting that Puerto Rico just took like a couple year break and right. number one, and then was able to get back. Because um, I would think that once you kind of take that step down, it just stays that way. But yeah, uh, somehow yeah, found after... a resurgence. Maybe an yeah. expansion. I'm not sure. I haven't played Puerto Rico, but yeah, that's true. It might have been an expansion or something like that. But yeah, I, I hear that one talked about still too, and I think that one's still in the top hundred as well. Yeah, yeah. Now we've got Toyota yeah. Struggle, which I think is still in the top hundred. Um, Chad looks like about a five year reign, which is uh, pretty significant. Yeah. Um, and then we had Gloomhaven. I don't know if these are exactly in order. <laughs> uh, I don't think so, because Pandemic Legacy nice. Season 1 nice. was, and that one only had it for a short time. Sadly, yeah. it finally must have just made its way up there, and then Gloomhaven, the behemoth, took over, and it was a short-lived title. Um, but, yeah, and then currently it's Brass, and they kind of traded off back and forth between Brass yes. and Gloomhaven, I believe. So it went Gloomhaven, Brass, Gloomhaven, Brass, like within a few-day span which I guess I don't know if that, um, since these go back, I'm not sure if that might have happened between some of these other games, and it's just not, yeah. Yeah. wasn't ever like written down or something like that. Um, but 
kind of interesting because then that that was kind of the main reason or one of the big reasons I wanted to do this video um, was that uh, because of brass finally taking over and I'm guessing some people had kind of pushed it up at the end. So and once they knew brass could overtake Gloomhaven, probably started just rating, you know, a bunch of tens and tens or, or tens and high nines and stuff for brass trying to push it above Gloomhaven to finally dethrone it. And um, once it did dethrone like it, yourself. then Gloom, Gloomhaven, fan, like myself, I pushed it up there. Uh, I think I officially was the one that put it over the edge. But um, and I think Gloomhaven fans started rating Brass ones or giving it ones to push it back down below it. And then Brass fans re reacted by giving Gloomhaven ones, which pushed it back below that and below I mean, they started. Pandemic Legacy Season 1. Um which it's crazy. kind of, yeah, brings into question. Um, I don't know. Then I think it starts you know, bringing into question the whole system and whether that should be allowed. And it's just kind of a slippery slope thing. Like, oh, well, you shouldn't uh, allow the, you know, ones and tens for these ones, maybe necessarily for, um, you know, the time being when it's between uh, or when it's going kind of back and forth between the two of them. Because... Yeah, I'm guessing obviously a lot of ones for either of these games, and possibly even a lot of tens for either of these games, in the last few months. How meaningful are they compared to other tens yeah. and ones that have been given given you know in the past? Uh, I mean, both of them have been around for five years now. So in the past five years, I I don't know, but then too, some of those ratings could have been given like four or five years ago, and yeah. maybe now the person that gave it a ten. It's like, well, now it's more of an eight to me. So yeah. it, it, just a lot of questions about it. Um, yeah. But yeah. I, I think overall still, it's definitely a solid system. I think it works. Obviously, I think that's more just on the people doing it more than the system. Yeah, anytime here. it's kind of open to, open to the internet. It's, right. There's going to be some shenanigans, but... right. Uh, yeah, like you said, I think it's there's enough votes and enough all that it it evens out a decent amount. Where just right now, when it's neck and neck, that does have an effect. But overall, right. in the end, it doesn't have a huge effect. Right, exactly, and that's what yeah, that's why I don't think it'll overall matter. But it just yeah, it brings up the question for maybe some other games, and I think that's kind of uh, another point that we wanted to talk about um, ones and tens for games just in general. I guess, what are your thoughts on giving games ones and tens? It, 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 for me personally, mm -hmm. I mean, I think it takes a lot to get either of those rankings. Um, like, I don't know how many tens I actually have on there. There's probably about 10. <laughs> tens that I have and I don't have anything rated a one. I think it takes a lot more to rate something a one um, than a ten. Mm -hmm. um, so when you see a lot of one ratings, I know everyone kind of has their own thoughts on how they give a game a number, but uh, I just mm -hmm. don't really view that as a realistic number for most games personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I, it's definitely um, dependent on a person's rating scale. And I think that's kind of another point as well is actually whether or not people are using the actual rating scale provided by Board Game Geek. I'll say that I am one of the people that does not. I think if I was going more based on kind of this awful defies game description for um, kind of a one star and a five star is more mediocre, take or leave it. Six is okay, we'll play if in the mood. Um, and then outstanding, we'll always enjoy playing. So I'm, I think my tens probably meet that description, but I think probably where kind of the gray area might be is a lot of my ones where I would say it's uh, it probably should fall under good, usually willing to play. Um, okay, if in the mood, which is a six star, I think I usually give those sevens, so I think I'm yeah. a little more generous than yeah. the scale. 
um, personally. So, yeah, I don't know. But like you said, too, I don't know that I've rated. I don't know if I have anything rated a one. Possibly Flux. I really <laughs> don't like that game at all, personally. Um, but it, t- it takes a lot for me to want to rate something that low. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, definitely because we usually don't just pick up random games as well. So anything we do pick up is usually based on a recommendation. And if it's getting recommended by someone we would trust, then probably is at least a competently made game, which I think it wouldn't be that if it would be a one. Right, right, exactly. Um, So yeah, I don't think we deal too much with that. but I do, yeah. I I sometimes wonder. I don't know, it kind of ruins it for other people if, because um, I guess one of the big things I think a lot of people have talked about recently is whether or not it matters. Uh, if you you know if Brass is one or Gloomhaven's one or, and in that case, I don't think it matters which one's number one, number two, number three, because um, those are all going to be still considered very. Uh, well-regarded games people are going to um, search them out if they sound interesting to them so in that case i don't think it matters as much but in the grand scheme of things um, if you had something like that happen to a game that's you know either close to the top 100 or um, making it fall out of the top 100 that could have some influence because i would say there's you know if i'm if I'm searching board game geek or just looking, you know, currently at the rankings of these, I typically for sure will always get through the first page, uh, which is the first hundred. And then, you know, we'll maybe get through the second and third, but um, kind of after that first page, it kind of decreases like the likelihood of me continuing. Yeah. So I think there is definitely, it can be very important, especially if you're on the edges of those pages um yeah just because you may you know just miss out on you know being the last one that someone looks at potentially um if they're looking for maybe a new game to buy or seeing if um sometimes i'll look over and see kind of what the prices are on some of the games to see like oh are there any you know really highly thought after games that uh, are relatively cheap for a board game and um does it sound interesting to me um so I could see how if you started just bombing a rating on a certain game for whatever reason or another, it could could potentially hurt that company because if it never gets corrected, you know, yeah. a year or two down the road, now it's, you know, someone new to the hobby, there may have been some reason for, well, most likely there's some reason why people would have done that, but um, yeah. it may not, it may not be as known at that point. Yeah. why that happened a uh, year or two later yeah for sure yeah i think like you said just being in that top 100 that's just top 100 sounds good that's an amount that people just i think gravitate towards no one's like i'm gonna look at the top 300 um mm. so i think that's just a natural cutoff and yeah just on that edge there if you're able to get one out of there that could be the difference between someone seeing it or not adding it to the collection or not and um, possibly missing out on what could have been their favorite game type of thing. Um, mm-hmm. and obviously, that's sales as well, it affects. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I think overall, like, do rankings and ratings matter? Just on a personal level of your enjoyment of a game, of course, it doesn't matter at all. I mean, it's just whether right. you like the game or not. I mean, there could be some bragging rights in your favorite game being number one, So, but that's just fun. Um mm-hmm. But yeah, just I think awareness of what's out there is what matters and kind of getting to see the games uh, where if it gets some momentum, gets snowballs up to a high number, you're going to be more likely to see that. And so it it does matter in getting people to see it, but I don't think it matters one bit on enjoyment of game. Right, right. So um, kind of a yes and a no. It does matter and it doesn't. Exactly. Because, yeah, and two, um, I would say if I'm interested in a game, I almost certainly come here and I will say the geek rating 
does apply or i mean the ratings in general do apply to games i'll likely get because i would say if anything is under a seven it's already got an uphill climb for me typically yeah yeah i would say so um which i don't know if that's necessarily the right way to think about it um if i'm looking at the actual scale because six is still will play the game if in the mood and stuff so maybe it's a change in thought pattern but i what is it? i think the color of it let me i know there was one that i was surprised at recently yeah like the color of it this <laughs> like when when you've looked at um this enough like all the better rated games are like green colors and stuff and blue light blue but it starts getting to be this color it starts getting scary <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like that looks like a game. That number, that color, like if you're not familiar with rating your games, mm -hmm. you won't really know. But just when I see that, I'm like, this game's got a problem to it when I see mm -hmm. that color. Like there's something in this that is keeping in my head a negative feeling towards this game. Um, when Lanterns is one of our all-time favorite games, um, right? just to see that. If we just based it on that, seeing that number, 6.9 mm -hmm. probably wouldn't have put that at a priority by. Right. Yeah, 100%. So I, I think there is that part to it, too. And I'm not saying anything, you know, people negatively rated this one or anything. I had, I don't know. Um, people just wrong, apparently, on this one. <laughs> but um, and I don't know that it's wrong either. I mean, 6.9 is still good. It's just, yeah, something with the that color. If it had been a seven, it would have been a light blue and it would have yeah. been a whole different feeling. So yeah. it's it's kind of strange how um, once you've looked at it enough that just automatically, um, I don't know, red lights start flashing like, uh oh, now something might be wrong with this and got to look into it further or something. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so. um. Yeah, other than that, uh, going back to kind of rating some of these games, either 10s or 1s, based on your opinions on these, um, or just in general, any game. Cause I, I think I've seen it a few times, and you can probably tell by maybe some of my ratings on some of the Stonemaier games. I'm a pretty big Stonemaier fan, but I know there are a lot of um, Stonemaier haters out there, and... Uh, but there's a lot of Stonemaier fans, too, that would probably rate things 10 without actually playing it. And then, um, obviously, a lot that rate it 1 without playing it. I guess, is there any way to combat that? <laughs> I, I don't know if there's a way to combat that or not. Just rating it without playing it. Which, I don't know if we've determined that that's a bad thing. <laughs> I have been right about a game before. A few games. Tapestry... Dwellings of Eldervale, I had watched That's playthrough true. after playthrough, gotten a very good feel for the game before I'd even played it. Mm -hmm. And I knew those would both be nines or tens for me. They ended up being that. Um, so I could, that, I wouldn't have felt as bad rating it, but um, mm -hmm. definitely I feel like I would be a lot more experienced and able to give that rating than I think a lot of people do who may just be super fans or super haters of mm -hmm. a thing. And right. like you said, I don't know how you could combat that. Right. I, mean, I think that happens for um, a lot of the Kickstarter game found projects as well. Some of the unpublished games that obviously no one had or very few people would have their hands on. And yet yeah. you see all these ratings of tens and ones and it's like, okay. I mean, obviously they've got those dummy votes in there to kind of and kind of even out and you know oh the tens are doing it because we got to even out the ones the ones are doing it because we got to even out the tens <laughs> i i just don't understand that at all and i'm like yeah yeah it's... but some of I, I know kind of once or at least i've seen it quite a bit recently it seems like uh where when a game starts actually delivering uh one of their you know the game if it's a kickstarter or something um one of their most recent you know 
um, updates or whatever. They'll usually say, oh, once you've played it, go update it on Board Game Geek. Um, so I think in general, getting rankings in there is helping it so that it becomes more visible. So I guess if you weren't able to, you know, you just couldn't find the time to play something, but you kind of um, are hoping to have a good time with it. I guess if I was going to rank something, knowing, you know, I'm probably not going to get this to the table in the next couple of months, but I want to kind of maybe push it up, get more eyes on it, help the company. Um, I might rate it like a seven or something just to give it more votes to get it, you know, moving up, but then it's not really, you know, influencing it too highly or negatively. Yeah. 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 I, I could see that. And as well, if I mean, just, not that important of a thought, but then that would get it into your kind of your ranked games, your list of ranked games. And mm-hmm. if you're not someone who goes through and writes down all of your owned and kind of the status of the game in your collection, right. you might want to just rank it something just to have it on there. So you don't forget about it and have to search it down a future date or something. So right. I can see that as well, but I mean, that's obviously just a little thing. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, what can you do about it, really? Yeah, I, I don't think there's any best answer for it. Because I would say, too, um, kind of until this recently happened, there were a lot of games I hadn't gone back and actually rated at all um, that I'd played maybe, you know, it's probably been close to a year ago now for the first time or, you know, a couple times. And uh, it's just one of those things that, I feel like I should probably more often go back and check and see if there's games I haven't rated that I've played or go back and check ratings on games um, just because I don't know. I don't know how important you think that is. I I feel like it can be useful information um, to be able to update those, but I don't know either that a lot of people do it, so I don't know if it's necessary. Yeah, yeah. I just like I just like ranking things and rating things, so it's something I always like to do. I go back every like you said, probably every maybe year or so and kind of just relook at things and adjust them a little bit. Um but yeah. I don't I'm guessing a lot of people don't really keep up with it. Um mm-hmm. I mean I see some people like, oh, they have two hundred games in their collection and like forty of them rated. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, so either they have not played any of those <laughs> or they just kind of haven't gotten around to ranking them, which right. Which could be the case. Um, yeah. Either way could be the case. Because uh, sometimes it is definitely hard to find time to get a ton of games played, especially if you have a handful of ones you really like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then that kind of brings into question. There is a comment section which is another thing that I look at if I'm interested in getting a game. I'll go to kind of the ones and twos, you know, the lower ratings, one, two, threes, and then maybe the tens and nines, and then actually look through those for comments um, just to see what uh, people have to say. And then you can kind of (laughs) find ones possibly that are like, oh, I'm rating this a 10 because of the ones or ones because of tens or other kind of, you, you get the feeling that, Okay, I don't think this has anything to do with the actual game. It's <laughs> it's more of how they feel about something. Um, yeah, I find yeah. that important, but I know I have never personally done that. I don't know if it's something that I should do, uh, or if that's just maybe something I should do for very highly rated games, very low. Um, just because I feel like in like the five, six, seven range, I don't think as many people are going to be looking at those comments. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. That's maybe that's true. Yeah. Cause like you said, I don't think you might have flux as a one, but most of your negative reviews, which like you said, is probably the more interesting tapes that you would have is why you dislike a game. Mm -hmm. Those for you would probably be rated. Yeah. Like four five, six. And that's not really an interesting number to go when you look at it from one to ten, that's right in the middle. That's not really something you would be drawn to look at. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, I, I I forget if I've put any reviews, any comments on any of mine. Um, I've should I'm planning on doing it, but then once I see 
exactly how many games I have there, I'll probably be like, oh, God, I cannot <laughs> put a comment on 300 different games. So like you right. said, it might be better to just do it for maybe your top tier games and maybe your bottom ones and mm -hmm. just see if there's any interesting comment on um, any game in the middle that you think could be something to help someone else possibly decide if they'd like the game or not. Right. Right. Or if maybe it's a special case scenario, like if it's a game like I don't remember what they have, Cthulhu Death May Die rated. But that's a game that I wouldn't have thought oh, that I would yeah. have liked, but I, I really, really liked it. So that score coming from me is almost even higher than really um what it would be because it wasn't really a theme that I was interested in and it wasn't um yeah, really the dungeon crawly or whatever type game play wasn't something that I thought I'd be interested in. So the fact that I really liked it, I mean, that's probably something I should have a comment on. Yeah. Oh, here's Paths for sure. Glory. Yeah, Paths yeah, of Glory. Glory. I saw so that. Too. <laughs> it's crazy that that's still so high. Higher than Karkov. Okay, this this system is terrible. <laughs> and that is higher than Carcassonne. <laughs> I 1999. It came out the year before. They're just fighting uh, back and forth. Um, and oh my god and ticket to ride <laughs> oh my goodness I better go rate paths of Gloria one <laughs> you better oh, knock that thing good. down how many how many votes does it have only has Ooh. almost 5,000 hmm. which isn't all that Makes many so fun. there aren't aren't too many ratings in that one interesting yeah, hmm. yeah other than that I mean I don't I don't think there should be like a requirement on how many times you play before you rate something. Would you say? I don't know. No, I, I think, think it's, yeah, I think it's different for different games for different yeah. people. Mm -hmm. uh, like, yeah, I think some games you just know whether you like it or not. And some mm -hmm. games you really have to dive in to see if maybe there's enough replayability or if everything seems balanced or there's different paths to victory for us that's kind of a thing that we talk about that could affect a rating um, and possibly bring it down over time um, but like you said it's hard to get all your games to the table uh, we recently mm -hmm. did an A to Z challenge where we played our entire collection and that was very <laughs> tough and that was yes. just playing every one of them once so exactly. if you did have a certain requirement of playing every game 10 times before you can rate it, I mean, I don't even know that it would be a high percentage of our collection that we probably haven't played 10 times. Um, and I still feel like we are qualified to rate them a number. Mm -hmm. I mean, certainly not as much as some people, but um, right. I, I, I think... Agree. I think you can rate it after one play. And there are bad plays that could even be group dependent. Um, and that sucks that those probably do factor into this. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think you just know if you can rate it. If you feel like you have a good idea, you probably do. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I think that I think it's fair to, um, yeah, rate it immediately. And if maybe you're not sure, but you just want to get a rating in there because you don't know when the next time you'll play it is, and you at least somewhat enjoyed it, but you might not be sure, then I I typically just will give it my, I usually give it a seven if it's kind of somewhere of, um, I'll play it for if, especially if someone asks to play it, I'll play it for sure, yeah. and then sometimes I myself will be the one that'll suggest playing it. That's kind of what my seven is, so it's kind of I guess my average, so. Like I said, I think I'm probably more generous than the Board Game Geek scale. Um, so I don't know. Maybe I should go back and think of it actually using their exact scale. Um, because I guess when someone's looking at individual game, they're not looking at necessarily how you rate every single game. Um, they're not going to go in and see like, oh, well, he rated this a 10, but his median is or a 9 or something, or his average is a 9. Yeah, that's um, true. Yeah, so. that's the thing. Just everyone sees it a little differently. So, like you said, I think it could be good to have those comments there, mm -hmm. so they can get a better feel for what you actually think of a game. Because your seven could be someone's maybe eight 
or possibly mm-hmm. their four. <laughs> I mean, right. Everyone sees it differently. And, yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, did you have any other comments on the Board Game Geek rankings? Uh, not much, but I did see of all the number one games, we have played Brass, obviously. Mm-hmm. We played Pandemic Legacy Season 1. Um, That's true. Um, I don't know if we've... Have we played the original Agricola? Uh, I think I have. Okay, but I, I have played... I think it's pretty much the same. Revised edition, uh, which, I mean, there's multiple editions of different things on here. Um, oh, I do. Yeah. I do wish they could clean that up a little bit, um, especially for our. We have like a scratch off play uh, through yep. the entire top one hundred, and I think there's like two versions of Twilight Imperium. Yeah, it's, like, it's going to be hard enough to to play the third edition or the fourth edition, but now we're kind of right. had to play both. Um, where I personally would group those together. Um, but yeah, so those, and then obviously the game of life we have played as well for that mm-hmm. um, 65,000 out of 10 rating. I've got that to number one. So we played, I think, four of the all time number one games. Yeah, it's pretty crazy that we actually played one of the number one games of all time when we were actually pretty young because of that, the game of life. So it's, yes, it's kind of cool that we were already taking part of this at such a young age and didn't even know about it. Yeah. Um, uh, even though at the time we played it, I guess I don't remember what time that was. Yeah, we, it might have been. It might have been. 2006. Yeah. So it was probably I about that. Could have been about that time. We would have played it the very day that it became number one. It, there, There is a possibility uh, for sure. Um, but yeah, you bring up a good point. I would say um yeah the multiple editions uh yeah the ex- makes things it's tough. so different though because you have sequels of pretty much all of the the top four that we played have multiple editions you have brass that has multiple versions right. Right. pandemic obviously is a huge system with three seasons and a ton of base games and then yep. obviously what was the other one we played well i played gloomhaven jaws of the lion Right, uh, which is in the same vein as Gloomhaven. Obviously, life has a ton of versions, I'm sure, but <laughs> um, yeah, there's it's interesting that it, I don't know how you would go about it and what defines it to yeah. not really be able to exist on its own. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know, I feel like if you haven't played the versions, like, I'm willing to put all the Twilight Imperiums together but if i mm-hmm. had played all of them maybe they're different enough to exist on their own but just from on the outside i don't feel like they are but right yeah great western trail is two editions in the top 10 or top 100 um the crew has two different games um and yeah usually the newest edition will typically be the best one so i don't know if you could just get rid of all the previous ones because obviously, if it wasn't the better edition, there's no way that it would also make it into the top hundred. I don't think. I don't yeah. think it would just make it into the top hundred based off of how good the previous one was. Yeah. It wouldn't really make much sense. Um, well, I guess if it was the same game, but yeah, like you said, unless you play all of them and know like how different they are, because um, like Pandemic Legacy Season One, Two, and Zero, um, I, we haven't played Two or Zero. Um, I would assume that they're all different. So they could all be, but at the same time, do you just have the pandemic system or have the pandemic system be one and then pandemic legacy, you know, system be another thing? Yeah, I wonder if that would make it too powerful almost. Yeah, I'm not sure. Then you're just getting the people who played legacy and maybe don't prefer the base game anymore, the people who prefer the base game or any version of it. Mm-hmm. Could then, I mean, that might make it unstoppable, I right? Think. Um, and I think the I don't think any of the other Azuls have made it in, even though I think most of them are all decently well rated overall. Um, yeah. so I don't know if you just in that case, I mean, we've played them all, 
would you say they're different enough or would you say that that could i guess if you were trying to put things together you'd almost have to start doing like game system so would that be like zool game system or would it be um, are they different no. enough I th they they're definitely different enough i think um unmatched um no, you know. that that's a game system which actually i think the unmatched game system is on here somewhere um but that's not actually overly high i think cobble and fog edition oh, is yeah. the highest rated unmatched um and the actual system is lower so i guess maybe it would not be overpowered um mm -hmm. but yeah i think there's a lot of games that are just dominion like, uh, yeah, dominion is right on that line of should probably just be a system um right. but again it's from the outside we have not played only played base game and one of the expansions um so it's hard to say right so but yeah i i kind of wished there was something for that at least for the top 100 um, yeah but or at least an option can you is there any option that you know of to filter those out not that i'm not that i'm aware of but uh, there could be i feel like there's some things on here that i feel like should be possible that i don't know how to do so um, yeah. kind of some of the sorting pieces to it like i was trying to like go to the lowest geek rating ones that actually had enough votes to qualify mm -hmm. but then there were a lot a lot of nas so i wasn't sure if there's a way to actually sort those nas out i'm sure there is i just don't know how to do it <laughs> um so i couldn't i was trying to see like which ones were rated the lowest but then yeah i wasn't able to find it but yeah, yeah. um outside of just that you did bring up another good point <laughs> um one last point uh, as with those like scratch off charts of like, oh, have you played the top 100 games? That's another place where, um, you know, when people ask, oh, does it matter? Yeah, maybe it doesn't matter in this case, you know, being number one, two or three or whatever. But I mean, if at the whatever point in time that they print that off, whatever the top 100 games are going to be on that poster, that's not constantly updating. So um, it could be important at that very time. So yeah. if you help rate a game, bump it up from 101 to 100, it's going to be on that person's poster. That's whereas, true. you know, this is vice versa. Um, so that yeah. that's where it could be important because it could be a game that that person was never going to play until, you know, that happened. And then maybe they'll yeah. either really like the game or really despise it. Right knock it off one. of future and knock it off of future ones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. But, yeah. Although I had if anyone's made it this far, let's know in the comments below what your thoughts are on and any of those uh, many topics we brought up kind of rambled a lot, but uh, there's just a lot of interesting pieces to yeah. it. But overall, I still think this is insanely, incredibly very helpful. Yes. Um, I don't I don't know if I have any suggestions for, you know, a better way of doing it. So I think overall it works really well for what it's trying to do. Yeah, um, yeah the hobby would not be anything that it is without this site. It, just the growth that it's had in mm -hmm. the past years or decade or two is just I think a lot of that has to do with this and the community built by it and just being able mm -hmm. to see all the new games to spend all your money on right um, exactly yeah. um but yeah yeah congratulations to brass birmingham it deserves it i knew I it like i don't like it as much as this guy but i do i do like it quite a bit i think i have it in 8.5 or something mm -hmm. yeah i really love the game and i think the production definitely has something to do with it definitely gives it that extra edge which i think it's that's what happens for a lot of games that I like that have really high quality production. Um, so it's not like just specifically for this one, but um, other games as well. But that that gives it just a little bit. Of it extra does. Edge. Just it it it's a good tiebreaker when you kind of maybe haven't played a game in a while. You think back to it. A production can definitely elevate it. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's another topic we'll have to cover in the future. That's true. Uh, let us know in the comments below if you want us to. Maybe look into that, or um, if you have anything else for us to dig further into on Board Game Geek and discuss, then we'd be happy to do that. Uh, but otherwise, 
We hope to see you on the next one. And as always, don't forget to keep on nibbling on our content.